All right. Uh, this is unit eight, motorized miter saw. Uh, in case you don't know what a miter saw is, it's that saw right next to the eyeglass, safety glass cabinet, right to the left of it. Uh, you'll notice right now it's kind of turned at an angle on the table just so it doesn't stick out there in somebody's walkway. So, if you haven't got any notes, stop the video, go get a set of notes. You should have them by now anyway. All right, let's begin. Uh, wear safety glasses, guys. Really? I know I keep harping on this because it's important. I only got two. Let's keep them. Uh, number two, make sure the saw is securely attached to the table. Miter saws, the power miter saws, if you turn it on and it's not bolted down, it will vibrate around and it will cause problems. It could cause you to get hurt, it could cause you to damage a project. Uh, make sure it's bolted down or secured in some fashion that it's not moving. Ours is bolted to that table. It's not moving, trust me. Uh, three, hold or clamp the material securely before making a cut. When you put the material up there on the table, saw, on the miter saw, you hang on to it. There's a fence right there. You, you grasp the fence and the material and you make your cut. That way it doesn't move around. Real easy to do. Number four, keep your hands at least four inches away from the blade. When your hand is up there and you're running that saw, uh, you want it from your fingertip to the front of that blade a minimum of four inches. Keep it back here. Uh, you don't have to be right up there on top of it. Uh, if your project's that small, we need to find another way of cutting, or I will make the cut. But you will keep your hands four inches away. Uh, check the cords. Make sure they're in good operating condition. Um, I checked this one before school started, and everything was in good shape. Uh, number six, after after the saw has been has cut through the material, you you brought the saw down, you push through. Before you lift up the or the saw, you let off the switch. You let the blade come to a complete stop. Then you lift it up, and then you can move your material. Never lift that blade up while the blade is spinning. Those safety guards are designed to come back around and cover it up, but sometimes they can take a second for it to get there. And if that blade's out there spinning unguarded, it's a major risk. All right. So cut through, let off the switch. Let the blade come to a stop, then lift it up, and then take your material out of the, out of the saw, and everything will be fine. Seven, uh, never you remove any scrap material inside the cut zone uh, while the blade is turning. Wait till that blade has stopped. Okay, I can't emphasize that enough on this thing. Uh, you're literally sticking your hand underneath that blade every time you, when you reach in there. Make sure that blade is not moving. Uh, if you're Still nervous? Get a push stick. Get something to, to move it out of the way. All right? But make sure the blade is off. Eight, keep the saw blade sharp and well lubricated. Uh, our blade is getting a few years on it, but it has still got enough sharpness. I think we'll be able to make it through the school year. Uh, if cutting long stock, support the long end of the material. Get somebody to stand out there in the tell-off position. Remember what the tell-off is? That's where somebody stands out there and holds the material so when it cuts, it doesn't fall away from you. Okay? If you need that, ask for it. Uh, Ten, use the shop vacuum. Uh, it's right there beside it. It's right to the left, or I'm sorry, it's to the left-hand side of the machine. Hook the hose to it. There's a connection on the top of the uh, miter saw that's made for that vacuum. Turn the vacuum on, do your job, when you're done, use the vacuum to vacuum the table up, and you're good to go. Number 11, if we're using this machine outside, and I guarantee you we won't because we're not unbolting it from the table, but if you have to take it outside or use it in a wet, damp location, you need to use what's called a ground fault circuit interrupt, or GFCI. Uh, that way, if there's an electrical short, it automatically will disconnect the power quicker than the circuit breaker, and hopefully prevent you from uh, getting a very bad shock or worse. Uh, Twelve, position the electrical cord out of the way of the material. The electrical cord on a miter saw should always be to the back side of the machine. It should always go be straight out the back side. There should be no need for it being draped over the front of the machine 
uh, in the cutting area. All right. Uh, 13. Lock the blade in its safest position. In our saw, you push it all the way down. There's a lock deal on the back side, locking mechanism back there. When you engage that, the blade stays down. You can't get your hand underneath of it. The guards are there. Everything is good. We also take and rotate the saw to one side or the other so it doesn't stick out in the walkway. Uh, sometimes if you're not paying attention, that thing's sticking out there. It's kind of like walking into an open drawer. It hurts. Uh, 14. Caution others in the work area to wear safety glasses or be aware of the saw that's being generated by the saw. Uh, one of my rules is when you start to use that machine, you announce to the entire classroom, cutting, and you say it loud enough that it can be heard clear across the room. All right. And that is your responsibility. Okay. That way everybody knows that you're fixing to turn that machine on and it's fixing to be noisy for a moment and they're not caught off guard. All right. Uh, wear a respirator or a good quality dust mask if you're going to be using the machine at a long uh, extended period. Most of the stuff in here, we make one, maybe two cuts, and we're done. So we're not really required to have one there. But if you're making multiple cuts and you're going to be there 10, 15, 20 minutes, you need something over your face, mouth, and nose to uh, protect you from the dust. Uh, wood dust can make you sick. It can cause dust pneumonia. Hearing protection, same thing. If you're going to be there for a long time, go ahead and put some hearing, hearing uh, protection on. Uh, I've got to get some earplugs. I'm out of them right at the moment, but I will get some have here in the room. Again, that's only if you're in there for an extended period of time. If you're just making an eight cut or two cuts, you don't need it because you're not going to be exposed to it long enough to hurt you. 18. Make a trial cut on the, on the material to make sure that everything's fine. Uh, make sure you've got your measurements set right. Make sure the angles are set right. Uh, this machine out here is called a compound miter saw. It can uh, come out, turn, and be at an angle at the same time and makes very unique angles. And if you're trying to make one of those, test it on a piece of scrap lumber first before you actually use it on your actual material. 19. If the material is bowed or warped, meaning it's not straight anymore. Uh, you're going to need to clamp that down to the table uh, uh, out there to keep it from moving around when you're cutting. A lot of times when you try to cut a piece of uh, lumber that's bowed and you cut through it, it tends to want to slap down and pinch the, the saw blade. And that can be very dangerous. So you always want to make sure it's uh, secure. 19. Align the saw to the waist side of, the, of, the, of, the, of your line that you're drawing. If you marked off two inches, uh, you may you set the saw to the side opposite of the piece that you're wanting to keep. Does that make sense? Always set it to the opposite side of the line that you're wanting to keep. That way, when you measure it at two inches and you cut it, it should be two inches. If you cut on the wrong side, it's going to be an inch and 15 sixteenths, and it's going to be too short. So make sure you set it to the correct side. Uh, align, or sorry, hold the saw firmly and lower the blade down. Okay, we're going to be talking about in this one here how to do the cut. You're going to lower the blade down. You're going to set it up where it's supposed to be. Once you get it where you want, you move your hand back out. You grab it out there outside the four inch range. You bring the saw all the way out to its fullest extent. Lower it down. Start the machine. Let it come up to full speed and ease it through the machine. When you get all the way through, Release the power, shut the power off, let the blade stop spinning, and then lift it up. Then you can take your material out of the way. That's the safest way of cutting on a, on a miter saw. Uh, I'm not going to let you do it any other way. <laughs> so you might as well just get used to that. Line it up where it's supposed to be. Bring it all the way out to its fullest extent. Lower the blade down. Turn the power on. Ease through the material. Turn the power off. Lift it up after the blade has stopped. Lift it up, then take the material out. Okay, um, that's I've also discussed that in 22 as well. Uh, hmm, imagine that. 23 is a repeat, just worded different. Hold the material securely while making cuts. Do you think we're trying to make a point here? 
you don't want that material coming loose. If it comes loose, it will tend to walk around and mess up your cut, and then you got to start all over. Uh, 24. If you're making a bunch of cuts of the same size, I can show you a little trick. You measure, you can measure from the blade out onto the table and screw a stop block out there. Then you can slide your board in there, cut it, move it out of the way, put the next one in, cut it, and they're all going to be exactly the same length. If you measure every single one of them, I guarantee you they're going to be varying lengths because you can't, by the blind eye, get it exactly in the same spot every time. Just a neat little trick. Number 25, uh, kickbacks. Kickbacks hurt on a miter saw. And I'll show you what a kickback can do to your project. That right there is the result of a kickback. I was cutting them on the machine. I was doing, I'm going to cut this off right across here in this area here. And I made it about this far in. And all of a sudden, the machine kicked or it grabbed the part, and it grabbed it so hard, it, it literally slammed my finger that was holding right in here. It picked this board up and slammed it back down so fast, it broke my thumb. Uh, I keep this around for show and tell, and this is exactly why. Uh, kickbacks do hurt, and they hurt very bad. Uh, tell you a quick little story of my very first year teaching. Uh, I was teaching in Vilas, Colorado, teaching a woodshop class. Had a freshman using the table saw. We were building bat houses for the grass, uh, U.S. Forest Service out there in the grasslands. And his job was to cut the roof of the bat house. The roof set at an angle. The ends of it were cut to where the ends were straight up and down. They were uh, uh, angular. The process was to run through the saw one way, take the material out, turn it around, and feed it back through again, and that would cut both angles exactly the same. I demonstrated multiple times. The student demonstrated back to me that he could do it multiple times. And I had a lab aide uh, in the classroom. I had him demonstrate to me that he knew how to do it multiple times. And then I moved on after my satisfaction that they were good to the next step in the process. Table saw came on. I always look to see that they have their safety glasses on, the shirts tucked in, all the safety procedures, everything are being followed, and everything was good. I heard the saw go through multiple times. All of a sudden, I heard this zzz, bang and this blood curdling scream that you have never heard out of a teenage boy. The table saw kicked the board out and hit him right at his belt. He was bruised up so bad that he was out of school for two weeks. I taught there for two years after that. I never got that boy to touch that machine again. He paid other people to do his part uh, on the table saw so he wouldn't have to touch it. What he did wrong, he realized he did set the board in the right place and he let go of the board just a little bit and the machine literally kicked that board right out of the out of the table saw and hit him. So table saws are something you gotta be aware of. You gotta be very cautious of them. Experienced operators have had kickbacks. It's, well, if you use a machine long enough, you're gonna have one. Alright? Just be aware of them. Um, let's move on. Number 26. Remove scraps from the cutting zone to avoid being thrown back out of the machine. Same thing. Loose material if it gets caught by that blade, it will throw it. Clean it up, keep it out of the way, everything will be fine. Uh, 27 is kind of a repeat of one we had earlier. If you're cutting a long stock, a long stock get a helper. Have them uh, hold the material up for you. 28. Keep your work area clean and free of clutter. You know, how many times do we got to say this? A trashed out work zone is an unsafe work zone. If you're not using it, Put it away. If it's not going to be used for your project, put it away. Get it out of sight, out of mind, and it's not a risk factor. All right. Number 29, the ballerina deal again. Don't overextend yourself. Keep your balance when you're using the saw. Always. Okay. I hope I didn't scare you too much about the kickbacks. 
but you need to be aware of it. It is something that can happen. Okay? Like I said, it's not if it will happen, but when it will happen. Okay? Don't let that scare you away. All right. If you have any questions, you know where I'm at. Be sure to read your rules word for word before you take the test. All right? Good luck. See you later.